That was Michael Bennett. By the way, next time you go to vote, Colorado Secretary of State is making some changes to improve the accuracy of your vote. And Secretary of State Jenna Griswold is joining us here to explain what's going on. So thank you for being here. We want to specifically first show folks the QR code because that's the issue um, that's at stake here. It's that black and white square and you see it there on your screen. It's printed out on Colorado's ballot. Um, it marks the devices with the summary of votes. Is that right? Is that That's, that's right. So when Coloradans go vote in person, uh, they may vote uh, on a machine that prints out a ballot looking exactly like the ballot that you have up right now. Uh, and the problem is, is that we tabulate those votes looking just at the QR code, not the summary of candidates. Uh, the intelligence community and uh, election advocates have warned that QR codes are uh, open to manipulation. So we want to lead the nation and remove those codes from our our ballots. So explain how 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 does the hacking process work? What's What's wrong with that QR code? Uh, the problem with the QR code is that you as a voter can't understand what it says. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a paper ballot that a voter can see exactly what their choices are and that when we count the ballots, how we count them is looking at the voters' choices. So we will be moving to a system where how we count ballots is actually looking at ovals, even when a voter chooses to vote on a machine and get a paper printout. So this is really going old school. Is that, was that what you're saying? It's new, new school going <laughs> old school. Uh, you know, the, the safest way to protect against election manipulation and hacking is a voter verified paper ballot, not having any of our voting machines connected to the internet, uh, and then doing an audit afterwards to make sure that the count uh, using tabulation machines was done correctly. So moving away from QR codes really cements and solidifies Colorado's uh, position as the safest state in the nation to cast a ballot. And Colorado's the first to do this, right? We're the first to require that uh, tabulation machines cannot use QR codes to count a ballot. Uh, and what is really exciting is that Colorado, we have a lot of safeguards to make sure that the election results are accurate. Uh, a lot of states do not. Uh, and so we have been pushing our election vendor uh, to, to develop this new system and now it's being offered in other states it was just offered in Georgia well I saw something about in Georgia where they actually purchased that similar system but I thought that it that they were still using the QR code uh, they very well may be using QR codes for 2020 but mm -hmm. I think we're gonna see across the nation a move to increase security following our lead here in Colorado so what about human error does that not come into play then it absolutely does uh, and that's one of the reasons we use tabulation machines so a voter goes in casts a ballot uh, none of our voting equipment by the way is connected to the internet but how we count the ballots is through a tabulation machine anything electronic is open to manipulation so we we do a safeguard called a risk limiting audit where we go and pull a certain number of ballots and actually compare them huh. with a human pulling the ballot and I compare see. them to the tabulation. Uh, with QR codes, the risk is that the QR code could tell the tabulation machine uh, something other than what the voter intended. What you voted, yes. So we have those safeguards in place, but you know, we should always be looking at how to increase security uh, because Russia is looking at how to manipulate our elections and our democracy. So we have to follow the lead and say, what is the next step to make sure that we have the safest the safest elections in the nation absolutely absolutely i know the other issue that um, that we wanted to talk about is the u.s is looking at withdrawing from the universal postal union the president saying that that would save the u.s millions in dollars but you take issue with that so you know uh so the the problem with withdrawing from the upu is that it's going to potentially disenfranchise millions of americans living abroad including our military uh you know the upu is a treaty that a hundred 192 uh, countries are party to, which puts standardized rules around mailing. Uh, an election is coming up very soon. And if the president withdraws, there's going to be potentially millions of Americans who are not going to be able to receive or return their ballots. Is it timing that's the issue, or, or how does that work? How does that affect our, our folks overseas? So, speaking about all Americans, not just about Coloradans, because we have contingency right. plans to make sure that our voters can vote. Uh, what will happen is there will be no guarantee that a country will deliver U.S. mail. Uh, the federal administration ah, okay. is proposing to negotiate 192 mail treaties in the next two weeks, uh, which is highly unlikely. Yeah.
There's only half of states that allow any type of electronic transmission of ballots. We are the only state in the nation that offers a secure transfer of ballots. That's through an encrypted system. Okay, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, thank you so much. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate the explanation. Sure. Be right back.